All right, good evening, guys. We are doing another video. This is going to be over Clash of Thrones. So Clash of Thrones is basically one of the different war games that this game has set up where players can go through and take on other players. Now, you have war games, you have Thirst for Battle, and you have Clash of Thrones. I think there might be, like, a few others. I know Cla uh, Kingdom versus Kingdom is another, but for people in my kingdom, because of the fact that it's not open yet... It will be open in the next 48 hours, so hopefully uh, everybody's actually ready for that. I doubt they are, but, you know, eh, so be it. All right, so if we're looking at what exactly the sales are that basically help you out, there's whenever you have, an like, an event that is major, it always has some kind of sale associated with it. So the one that they have right now is this one, the Clash, uh, Clash of Thrones Special where you get basically 30,000 of these guys, 30,000 of that guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, the thing that you got to know is that what you guys will see versus what I will see will be different depending upon your level. If your guardsman level is low, then you're not going to get 30,000 of basically a guardsman level 8 type troop. You'll get, you know, two levels above what your guardsman is. And the number will usually be lower than what this is. So if you're like a guardsman level three, you're probably going to get like a thousand or five thousand type of, uh, you know, guys of a guardsman level five, you know, type of, you know, fighter. Now, given the fact that I am a seven right now going towards my eight, I'm getting these guys that are basically on the eight level and they're 30,000 uh, 30, of them. So it's a nice, huge amount. If you decide to do a Merc level package, if you're going to commit, commit. So, like, let's say, for instance, right, in the course of a week, you decide, you know what, I got $500 that I'm willing to spend or whatever, then this would be a decent idea to go through and get your Mercs for the entire week. You would have it to where there's a times two sale. And then that means that you could go through and you could end up with three million in gold. So you basically would buy this package and you would turn around and you would buy the times two value, where therefore I would get another sixty thousand of this guy, sixty thousand that guy, sixty thousand that guy, and you know three thousand of this parrot thing. So all said and told, I would have ninety thousand, ninety thousand, forty-five thousand, and also my forty-five hundred. That is a huge amount, plus I would have 3 million in gold in order to revive them, which would make my army absolutely freaking lethal. Now, given the fact that I don't need it right now, and I'm trying to actually be smart money-wise, I'm not going to go through and get that. So as you notice and everything, like, you know, I always go through and highlight, you know, what exactly in the city. I know that some of you have been going through and asking for different things like, you know, well, oh, why don't you do, you know, like a video over city setup? Well, I have one of those now, which is great. But the one thing that a lot of people are going through and asking for that I am starting to put together and all. So be prepared. It will come. And I'm going to make it completely free of charge. It's not like I charge people money in order to have it to where you guys can learn from me. I just want you guys to be able to learn. So that this way it makes the game more fun so that you want to play it longer and that you don't have to spend so much money that therefore you're getting divorced and broken up with by your significant others because your finances are wrecked. So let's go through and try and save money and have it to where everybody gets to enjoy it. All right, so my city is basically set up like this. On the computer, it looks very different. If you're playing on your phone, you'll notice that usually like your army is over here in the bottom right-hand corner. For when you're playing it on the uh, computer, they go up here by your capital or whatever. And you can see my mercs lined up and all my troops. Okay, so now let's look at the actual map. Of course, they always make me go through and do this. So... By doing Clash of Thrones, what the difficulty is for the video is, like, how exactly, you know, can I show you guys what you can do with also, like, the different possibilities of whether or not people are attacking? So right now, we have a lull in the amount of, you know, people that are attacking, which means that nobody's really attacking us right now. Now, like, 20 minutes ago, this one clan kept on going through and attacking and attacking and attacking. And I was sending my armies to this or, uh, to this city and that city and that city and that city all over the place in order to help defend. Right now I'm bubbled. So you'll notice that right down here in the very bottom center, right? That's my city. And right now I'm bubbled because during the beginning part of Clash of Thrones, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, usually there's a lot more activity 
than there is during the second day of Clash of Thrones. Clash of Thrones is a 48-hour event. And the other thing that you'll notice is that certain clans, the ones that are better at this than others, they will attack you when it's usually nighttime for most people. So let's say that you're a U.S. player and everything like that. About four to five hours after the event starts is when a lot of the clans are going to go through and hit you guys. Now, if they know from like, so one of the things that like my clan leader is just like, hey, watch when you're on the kingdom chat because other clans do keep an eye on it. They're looking for you and then they're going to have it to where they will attack your clan when they think that you're not in the kingdom. And so if you go through and you're announcing on the kingdom chat, hey, I got to go walk my dog or I got to go do this and you're a powerful player for your clan, the other clan might be like, okay, it's time to attack him. Ha ha ha. And so they're going to do it that way. Now, for me, I don't sleep very much, so it doesn't matter when exactly they want to attack. They're going to deal with me anyways. So right now in my kingdom, it's nice and peaceful, or in my clan, sorry. It's nice and peaceful. We have our border set up like pretty darn far out because we've been able to upgrade our capital building. If your border for your clan is a lot closer and a lot smaller and everything, then you'll notice, like, see all this open area? This is the where getting your clan building upgraded drastically helps. The other thing is to where you can also make sure that you add in clan forts. Clan forts will go through and spread it out. So like here's one of our clan forts right here. Now, if you are a player that does not want to fight in the Clash of Thrones or in war games or Thirst of Battle, here's the best suggestions I could possibly give you. There is three ways to avoid fighting. Number one, you bubble. It's very, very easy. All you have to do is go into your personal bonuses. So on the right-hand side of my computer screen, see how I got this plus sign. I'm going to go through and look at Shield of Peace. I am currently bubbled, which means that this is active. If you have attacked a city within the last half an hour or another player's portal within the last half an hour, you cannot do Shield of Peace. So this is only achievable if you haven't attacked recently. Now, what some players do in order to go through and mess with other players is they'll be like, okay, I'm going to attack them during the middle of the night when I know that they're asleep. And then what they do is they go back to their city, they wait a half an hour, and they put up the shield of peace. So by the time that you wake up, you want like, oh my gosh, they attacked me. I'm going to attack them back. And then you, lo and behold, they're actually bubbled right now, so you can't go through and attack them. That's one thing that a lot of experienced players will do. Either that, or they'll move their entire city. So if you have it to where, like, let's say, for instance, I'm not going to do it. But I was to hit the teleport button. I could teleport my entire city to a different location. So let's say, for instance, right that somebody set up a portal right over here on the outside of my clan area, and they decided to attack me. Now, granted, I have a bubble up, so they can't, but let's say that they uh, didn't have a bubble up, and they start marching their army towards my location. I could go through and click on another location, hit teleport, and teleport my city, so that this way they cannot attack it. Now, what will happen is that immediately after they realize that, you know, oh, I can't attack it, their guy still has to walk all the way up here and all the way back, or their girl. Not going to be sexist on this one. And then they go back to their portal, and they're like, okay, you moved it over here. I'm going to go through and try and attack again. Now, what some people do is, instead of teleporting where you stay within the clan boundary, let's say that you are a big target, like... Everybody hates you. You have been going through and pissing off a lot of other clans. You can go through and be like, you know what? I'm going to take my uh, clan or my city and I'm going to move them all the way out into the middle of nowhere where somebody has to go try and find me. Like, you know, over here or in the mountains. If you put it in the mountains, it's even harder to spot. So if you want to go through and hide, put your city in a mountain and everything, in a mountain range, they're going to have a hard time finding it. And you can put it anywhere in your kingdom. So it's not just like, you know, oh, I'm going to move it within my clan or right next door to it or whatever. Move it wherever the heck you want. If you have that function to where you can move your, where you can teleport your city, that's a good way to do it. If you don't have it, you can always go up to the sales, go on over to the extra, and 
again. Let's scroll across. Teleport your city. You could buy 50 of them. It's basically $5 a piece. And don't get me wrong. It's worth it if you're going to go through and piss off a lot of people. We had this one guy. He basically was an outlaw and everything. He would go through and teleport and teleport and teleport and teleport all over the freaking map just to avoid getting hit. He would hit other people, but then hitting him was like trying to catch air. It doesn't work. So that's another way to do it. You could go through and bubble. You can teleport your city wherever the heck you want and go through and hide. Or the other way and the way that a lot of people do it that don't have the money for it is they will take their army out of their city and they will put it in a clan fort. Now, there is a caveat to this, right? When you're in the clan fort, due to the rules of engagement, no clan building is supposed to be attacked. So like this clan fort or these three buildings over here, or you have your uh, major capital or whatever, and then the other buildings that are in your kingdom, like the, uh, the universities and stuff like that. So here's what, you know, basically that means. If other people are not allowed to attack your, you know, clan buildings, then you're going to be safe. Now, not everybody plays by the rules, and this is one thing that we've run into before. To where players basically go through and they will attack the clan buildings and then you have to go through and you have to file a report and everything else in order to get it to where the player is either kicked off completely or have it to where they have their like, you know, they're designated as an outlaw or they're not allowed to join a clan or that you basically talk to all the other clans and you're like, hey, this person, if anybody sees them, keep on attacking them. And you just attack and attack and attack. If you're the enemy of like five or ten other clans, trust me, your time in the game is not going to last very long. Because you won't be able to build anything. You won't be able to do anything. It's always going to be basically torn down and killed. Especially if you have players of my size that are coming after you. It's not very good. So a clan fort is basically a way in order to go through and hide your army. So here's how you would do it, right? You click on the actual building. You click on army. And then you can go through and uh, click on reinforcements. So if you want to reinforce your area, then you could go through and send your guys on over to the clan fort. Now, this is a very good idea if you're trying to hide. It's also a very good idea if you're in kingdom versus kingdom, because let's face it, not everybody from other kingdoms play by the rules. And it's much more difficult in order to go through and find somebody that did it against you and everything from another kingdom and hold them liable for what exactly it is that they did. So I plan on when our clan opens up or when our kingdom opens up to the world that I'm going to stick my army in the clan fort. I'm going to bubble up so that this way they're not attacking my stuff. And in case like, you know, other armies from other areas decide to attack this that are basically outlaws or people that don't give a darn, then they're going to meet a big army when they go through and do it. Now, granted, like veteran uh, kingdoms, they could squash me like a bug. Like, like horribly, but I'm working on that. So I'm trying to get a little bit better and everything. I mean, granted, I'm never going to get to wear a top 100, but you know, whatever. Okay. So clan four is the third way you have it to where you could go through and bubble up simple enough. You just go on over to your bonuses area, click on this, go on over to shield of peace, go through and activate it. But remember only if you have not attacked either a portal or a city within the last 30 minutes. The second way is basically going through and having it to where you teleport your city from one area to another in the entire map. You could do it outside of your clan. You could do it to the farthest reaches of the map and basically hide. I've had people to where they hid on a freaking island in the middle of the water just to be able to avoid being seen. And trust me, trying to find those takes a lot of time. And usually by then, you could go through and put your shield a piece on. So therefore, you're fine. It would take probably a half an hour for them to be able to find you. Even if you had the whole clan looking. And the third way is to basically have it to where you send your army on over towards the clan fort, which looks like this right here. And I'll move the camera on in so you guys see it. That's what the clan fort looks like right there. All right. Now, now that we know the three different ways that you could go through and avoid fighting... Now we're going to go through and have it to where, like, basically you plan on fighting and participating in your own way. So what I would advise is if your bubble was already up, 
and you have it to where like you're not wanting to really fight when everybody else wants to fight. So here's one thing that I really like to do. And you see this a lot with, you know, the people that play like they're playing within reason. It might not be the most, you know, like gentleman like thing, uh, gentleman like thing where it's like pistols at dawn. Let's line up across from each other and fire. Hoo-ah. No, no, no pistols at dawn. We're going to go through and we're going to fight a little bit dirty. So you can take your bubble and leave it up and then basically decide when you think the other clan is at their least amount of activity. So one way to do that is to where you can go through and you can actually look at the other clan's chat and see how many people are actually going through and talking and everything. The other thing that you could do is you could basically go on to the kingdom chat and look through that way. Like, all right, let's see. So we're looking at kingdoms. We're seeing who exactly is on. G&G is on. My clan is on. TBC is on. And so you get a decent idea as far as like who's awake. TBC is definitely awake. So it's G&G. &G. And then there's a few other ones or whatever. And you can get a decent idea as far as like, you know, who is good, who is bad. And like one person that I like, he's kind of like a frenemy type of thing, is 300 SRT. Very, I'm giving this guy a shout out because he has been my driving force for the longest time as far as being able to go through and want to fight other people. Like he's always been above me. It's only recently that I've actually been above him and everything. But we always had it to where it was a civil type of fighting. It wasn't like mass brutalization and everything else like that. So I respect him in that, in that manner. And don't get me wrong, guys. When you're in a kingdom or whatever, you definitely want to go through and at least talk to people that oppose you. Get an idea as far as who they are. So that this way you know, hey, do I really want to attack them in the future? Or do I just want to go through and basically be their ally and make friends? And then you have it to where, like, you might be attacked less because of it. Like, I have some people in different clans that I went through. And originally I thought that they were my, you know, enemy. But then it's just like, hey, we started talking and we started making allies. And right now my clan has, like, five other allies and everything. So it works out very well. All right, so back to the issue at hand. We have it to where, like, you decide, hey, I'm going to keep my bubble up for a while. I'm looking to see when other people are going through and they're online or whatever. And then I'm going to go through and pick out when I want to attack. I'm going to attack usually when people are asleep or right before the end of the event. Because by the time that the second day approaches, everybody is worn the heck out. Like, here's what a lot of people do whenever this event comes up. They'll go into the sales and they're going to buy whatever kind of package they possibly can afford. They're like, oh, Clash of Thrones special. Yeah, I'm going to make my army so freaking huge. I'm going to attack everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then what they do is they exhaust their army. They spend so much of it basically attacking other people and all. So then what I do is I wait for them to exhaust their army. And then I go through and I attack them because at that point I can actually win and I don't have to spend $250 or, uh, you know, $500 in order to be able to get that times two aspect. I'm just going to go through and do it for a little bit cheaper, have it to where I can still attack them, still get my CP, my conquest points, but you don't have to exhaust your army in the process. So sometimes it's a matter of patience. Like, hey, let everybody else in my clan go through and attack other people. That's their choice. I am not going to dictate that to them. But when they get tired, when they get worn out, I am still there in order to go through and reinforce. And then I'm also going to have it to where I'm going to wait until the enemy is worn down. Then I'm going to attack them. And way too many people within 24 hours of COT, their army is exhausted, their silver is depleted, and they have it to where they're not able to fight. So if you are going to attack, pick your spots. The other thing about attacking, here's what I would suggest. Let's say that you're somebody like, you know, let's pick out this person right here. Scorpion, level 28 or whatever. And their might is below 3 million, so they would basically fall into a lower level. And their city, it's, what, a 20 right now? Yeah, that wasn't very smart. They're basically pushing the level too much on the city, and then they're going to end up getting attacked more because of it. Okay, so... What they would do is, if I were them, I would basically, especially with their might being so low, and people that have been playing this long enough will realize this, 
if you are smaller than the person that you are attacking, you're going to get a heck of a lot more points out of it. So let's go through and like basically pick on Saudi or whatever. This is the other clan that I like to go through and pit myself against because they are fun to be able to fight and they actually go through and they fight pretty well. So this clan, TBC, giving them a shout out because I do respect their play and everything. Let's say for Saudi, who has a might of 46, you know, million, 400,000. That person that I just looked at earlier that had a might of 700,000 or so, if she went up against Saudi, she would get her butt kicked. But here's the thing. If you fight somebody that is ridiculously bigger than you, like way bigger, not like a little bit bigger, but way bigger, and you're able to destroy any of their troops, your conquest points are going to be absolutely huge. So let me show you, right? We're going to go into the uh, clan chat and everything else like that. I'm going to basically go through and pull something up from my people just because of the fact that it is good education for you guys. All right, so scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Where is it? Further up. Da, 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 da. Sorry about this, guys. This is taking me a little bit longer to find. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, almost there. No, 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 no. You guys are getting a decent idea as far as, like, what exactly goes on. All right, so anyways. So in this part right here, so I'm going to bring it on in a little bit just so you guys can see a little bit better. So we have one of my, you know, uh, clan mates or whatever, Milanus. He went through and he decided to attack this other player and his name was Mex or whatever. And Milanus is bigger than Mex. So Milanus, when he went through and attacked, he won. But notice that the conquest points, 5 million compared to 1 million. If you win and everything, then granted, you're going to have it to where you destroy more of their army and all. So, I mean, if you're looking at their army, you're like, okay, that's pretty small. You look over here, it's a little bit bigger and everything. And it's also much more, like, if you compare one to the other, level 103, level, eight, uh, what is that, 89, you have 110, you have eight, uh, 66. You have it to where there's a big difference in between one versus the other, 131 and 72. Now, what happens, though, is the attacker will always get more points than the person that they uh, that they attack. So let's go through and have it to where we see the other side of it. Uh, attack against Rock House. Let's see, oh, they had no troops in there. No, we're gonna go up a little bit more. I'm hoping that I can find a good uh, instance for you guys. Oh, okay. Against Mago, okay. Oh, I hate this. Sometimes it does this where when you're clicking on it and everything, it fluctuates out of it. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, guys. That's because of the fact that this is going to get ridiculous watching me scroll through this. Just take my uh, like advice on this. If you attack somebody that is bigger than you, you will get way more conquest points. So here's what I would do, right? For that person that I was looking at earlier, I think uh, Scorpion right here, right? 700,000. I would advise Scorpion, if they were in my clan, to go after Saudi. Because Saudi is a really, really good, powerful player. Saudi has a, a like, you know, nice city, great might, 46 million. Saudi is going to go through and get attacked by that person and be like, <laughs> whatever. You know, they when it's such a ridiculous type of difference, they're not going to do anything about it. And then plus, if your might is so far below them... They can't really attack you. Now, you can do things in retaliation and all that kind of stuff. But I guarantee you, Saudi is not going to waste their time with fighting somebody that has a might of 700,000. So you can go through and attack Saudi, and they're not going to go through and try and attack your city. What happens, though, if your troops are able to kill any of Saudi's troops, then you're going to go through and get a massive amount of conquest points. Because you're fighting way above your weight class. It's like a uh, boxer that weighs 145 pounds going through and fighting somebody that weighs over 200 pounds. If you get a fight in or if you get a punch in and everything else like that, 
it is like, oh my gosh, I got a good punch in, you know, yay. Now, Grant, you're probably going to get knocked the heck out and everything, but at least you got something out of it. You got some like, yes, I fought above. And even if I went through and only knocked them down once, you might knock the person down. They're going to get back up because it's going to be like, eh, that tickled. And then they're going to go through and beat the crap out of you. But you get so many conquest points out of it. So if you decide to attack in Clash of Thrones, do it, number one, when the enemy is not expecting it. Because you will see it to where they will reinforce each other. The other thing is when you decide to attack, let me show you the difference. There is this uh, hero named Ulrich. This is the, uh, what the guy looks like right here, right? Ulrich has it to where whenever you, uh, someone tries to attack you and you have Ulrich, or you attack somebody else and they have Ulrich, it takes four hours in order for your attack to get there. Now, I know some of you are like, well, if they have speed ups, yes. But even with speed ups, if you do the math, speed up will cut the time in half. Four hours becomes two hours. That's number one. Two hours becomes one. One hour becomes 30 minutes. 30 minutes becomes 15 minutes. 15 minutes becomes seven and a half minutes. You still have seven and a half minutes in order to get reinforcements to your city. So like this person, Ferdis, or whatever, I went through and I attacked them. They had seven and a half minutes in order to go through and ask for reinforcements from the rest of their clan. So all the rest of their clan started coming on over and reinforcing them and everything else, which is great for them. It's bad if you're trying to have your troops survive it. Now, if you're like, you know, hey, by doing that, though, you can get extra conquest points. Yes. By them going through and reinforcing and everything, you will get more conquest points out of it. But you also have a much better chance of dying. So it all depends. Do you want conquest points or do you want gold? Do you want conquest points or do you want potions? That's what it's all about. And during Clash of Thrones, whenever you're defending, you get to revive your guys using silver, which is very, very nice. But it also gets expensive. So Clash of Thrones, when you're attacking, one, pick your spots. If I'm going through and trying to pick out one army to attack versus another, I'm going to pick the biggest, baddest one out there because it's more conquest points and more tournament points for doing so. I am not going to attack Ferdas because he has Ulrich or she has Ulrich. I would go through and I would attack probably Sadi because Sadi has a character that is not Ulrich. Or I would go through and I'd basically be like, I'm going to fight the biggest, baddest person there, which is 300 SRT. He has a great freaking army. Look at his might. It's already at 113 million. So 300 SRT would be somebody that was not to be trifled with by most people. And uh, now what you can do, though, is if you are a person that has like 1 million might, 2 million might, 3 million might, 300 SRT is not going to care. It's like... Oh, you tickled me. Oh, wow. So bad. Horrible, horrible. You know what I mean? So this way, like, you could go through and fight way above your weight class, and they're not going to care. If you have it to where you get uh, where you get attacked by somebody of your exact same power, you're going to get pissed off because you're like, hey, I could have won that fight. But if you're getting hit by somebody that's way, way below you, you're not going to care. You're like, whatever. You guys died. I didn't. So who gives a darn? So if you have, if you have a tour, you want conquest points more than gold, then attack way above your weight class. If you want to have a tour, you can fight somebody that you can actually win against, so you don't spend the gold or the potions on revival. Then go through and attack somebody that's a little bit lower might than you, and also make it to where you do not attack somebody that has Ulrich. Now here's the thing about defending, right? Because I've already told you, like, if you want to avoid fighting, then you basically need to go through and hide or bubble up or whatever. Let's go through and say that, like, we had it to... Oh, not there. Sorry. Wrong one. Bleh. Uh, not the I. No, 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 no. Let's see. God King, Fifi. Da, 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 da. Lord Harold. He's awesome, by the way. Okay, let's go back to me. So let's say, for instance, right, that you are being attacked and you have it to where you have Ulrich. And by the way, if you have the capability of getting Ulrich, here's the way that you do it, right? And it costs a little bit of money, so I do apologize and everything, but it's well worth it. If you go under the extra section of sales, 
and then you scroll on over to do, 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 choose your hero. Now you can do this through the game or you could do this through a sale. If you do it through the game, it costs you 1 million gold in order to unlock one of these heroes. 1 million gold. But if you do it through money, you can spend 50 bucks. Now, for those of you that are just like, well, which one is well more worth it? If I went through and I bought a package that cost $250 or whatever, I would get 1 million gold as part of it. Now, granted, I'm getting other things included in everything. Wow, there's a $499 one. Yeah, sign me up for Decorate My City. <laughs> Anyways. But when you're looking at Choose Your Hero and everything, I would rather go through and spend $50 on going through and getting somebody like Ulrich. So from the very beginning of the game, when you're going through and trying to pick out your character, you want the male versus the female, the Garrick versus Jill or whatever the heck it is. And then you can go through and you can pick out, I think they gave you one free unlock. I would highly suggest Ulrich, this guy in the front, because it gives you that seven and a half minutes guaranteed, if not longer, in order to go through and call for reinforcements. So here's what ends up happening, right? That other clan that we usually go through in battle, TBC, they have it to where they will uh, where they will usually try and attack people that either one, severely piss them off, or two, that do not have Ulrich. Because what they do is if they fight uh, if they try and fight somebody that does have Ulrich, they know that my clan members have seven and a half minutes in order to ask me or in order to put up the reinforcement thing. So let's say, for instance, right? Let's say that we looked at, you know, my city and I'm worried about I'm about to get attacked or whatever. There will be one of the options that will say reinforcements. Now, I can't do this because of the fact that I'm currently bubbled up. But one of the options is where you click on reinforcements. And you can actually request for your reinforcements to basically be done. So usually, the best way to get a hold of your clan members and basically let them know, hey, I'm about to be attacked, please send reinforcements, is to go through and click it, and then you will have a blue icon that'll pop up in everybody's screen, either off to the right-hand side if you're on the phone, or down here if you're playing on the computer. And then you can go through and have it to where other people will jump through a portal or they'll send their guys on over there. So what ends up happening, right, usually during uh, COT, I will sit in my city and I will basically just look around the whole entire screen for lines. I'm not looking for blue lines. I'm looking for red lines. If I see a red line to where it's just like, okay, they're about to attack my guys, and I'll also patrol the perimeter a little bit, and I'll go through and look for different portals or whatever. Then once you see a red line going towards any area inside of your clan area, then you could be like, okay, I got to send reinforcements to this guy. So Milanus, he gets attacked a lot. So I would go through and I'd send reinforcements on up there, click on the reinforcements, send them on up or whatever. Easy enough. But Milanus, the good thing about him is Milanus. Oh, sorry. Clicked on the wrong one. Milanus has Ulrich. So every single attack versus him, he has seven and a half minutes to ask for reinforcements and for myself and other people to get there. If you have it to where you're one of the other people in my clan. Now, this guy is not a part of my clan like Mickum or whatever. Mickum does not have Ulrich, so he can be attacked usually within 30 seconds. You put the portal on the edge and everything like down here off to the bottom right. And then you have it to where you would like send the guys on in. And by the time that they would get here, because you would speed up your attack, if you're attacking, always speed it up. Do not give the enemy time to reinforce. There has been way too many times to where I have missed reinforcing somebody else's city by five seconds because one, they didn't have Ulrich, and two, they had it to where either their city was off to the side or I was not able to get there in time. So if you have it to where you can go through and ask for reinforcements and you can have Ulrich, you're going to be much better off. So we've discussed at this point the three ways in order to avoid it, like avoid having a fight, avoid having to get attacked and everything else. The other stipulation I forgot to mention whenever I said go to the clan fort and send your forces up there is that when somebody attacks your city, they are able to steal resources from it if they win. 
Let me repeat myself. If someone attacks your city and they are able to win, they are also able to steal resources from it. So what they're going to do is look up at the very top of your screen. Now, whether or not this is on your phone or this is on like computer or whatever. I currently have it to where I have over 6 million in lumber, three, uh, about 3 million in uh, iron, and then about 4 million in stone that can go through and be stolen. I also have food, 312 million, and I also have 6.14 million in silver. This basically says to the enemy and everything, if you have a huge amount of something, like at one point I had over 800 million in silver that I accidentally clicked the darn wrong button when I was going to hit use or whatever, and instead it had it to where like um, the instead of hitting use, I hit the double arrow. And on premium, whenever you have that and you hit the double arrow, it will automatically use all of it. But when I did that, I basically flooded my, you know, active use type of stuff with over 800 million in silver. Very, very bad idea. Because then, let's say, for instance, that let's say 300 SRT decided to go through and attack me and everything. And if he got a, and he actually was able to win. And he got a crap ton of silver. He would probably get like, you know, maybe 15 million in silver. He'd be like, wait, I just got that much silver from going through and attacking him. I'm going to do it again next hour and the next hour and the next hour until you go through and you get bled dry of all of your resources because you left too much stuff in there, especially if your army isn't in the city. So if you're sending your army on up to the clan fort, the best idea is to empty out everything that you have. By empty it out, you have two choices. You can either, one, donate it. Like, there is buildings around your clan area. Let's go through and click on this. The clan temple uses food and produces religious tractates. Okay, so if I went through and I had a crap ton of food and I didn't want the enemy to steal it, I would go through and start donating as much food as I can to the clan temples. And there's other types of buildings that you could go through and basically add to. Like the clan university uses silver. If I have a crap ton of silver and everything, like the 800 million, I could go through and donate it or whatever. So having a lot of resources on hand is not a good idea, especially at the beginning of uh, Clash of Thrones. You want to make sure that you do not have that much stuff on hand. If you have it to where you need to access your resources in order to build up your army or whatever, Click on your items and only add the stuff that you're desperately going to use. Like, hey, I can use this stuff and everything. I am not going to be going through and clicking on 5 million for convenience. I'm going to be going through and clicking on the smaller amount in order to get it to where I'm not using that much at once. You guys get my idea? So... Just to wrap up this video, because we're going to end it on this note, because there's nobody attacking, so it makes it kind of difficult to show you all the actions of it. I will try and have it to where I show you guys a video of it later, but for right now, it's basically to where I have to describe what we got, and then you guys can go through and practice it. So, if you want to avoid fighting, number one, bubble up. Go through and uh, click on the icon on the right-hand side. Or uh, like on the left-hand side, if you're playing on your phone, the shield of peace. Go through and uh, activate that. Make sure you got plenty of time on that. And it's usually a one-week thing whenever you do the shield of peace. The second option is to have it to where you would go through and teleport your city from spot to spot across the entire map of your kingdom. That would go through and buy you plenty of time where people would have to go looking for you. And a lot of times people just give up because they're like, this is not worth it. I'm not going to try and find this person. I'm going to spend the next hour searching around the map. And then you have it to where it warns you, hey, attack incoming. And then you go through and move your darn city again. There are players that do that. And I don't particularly like it, but that's the way that this game is built. And then the third way, which is the way that a lot of people do it, they go through and they send their entire army on up to the clan fort and make sure that you use up as much of the building materials as you can before then. Do the upgrades that you want to do to your buildings or have it to where you donate it to the clan buildings, whether that's the university or the temple or whatever. So that this way, when they go through and they raid your city, they are not stealing the 300 million in food or the 6 million in silver. You would still go through and have used it in a worthwhile way, whether or not to help your clan 
or whether or not to have it to where like you used it on extra armies that you decide to build even though you weren't planning on it. So that's the ways to avoid it. The best way to attack is have it to where you go through and wait till the other people stop playing Clash of Thrones. Whether or not they're asleep or whether or not it's day two to where their armies are way the heck worn down. Their mercs are dead. They have it to where they don't have that much gold left. They don't have that much silver in order to go through and keep on adding into it. And then you go through and attack because your army will be fresh and theirs will not. And then the final thing that basically you guys need to know is make sure that you follow the O. Oh, I'm sorry, the ROE. Whenever a portal is set along the border of your clan area, for our kingdom, at least it's this way. I don't know about other kingdoms, but it pretty much holds true, I think, if I remember correctly. If a portal is set within three spaces of your clan area, you are allowed to attack it. Doesn't matter whether or not you're hella big and they're hella small or anything. The other thing is, is if they put a portal, let's say out here in the middle of nowhere and everything, but they send armies through it in order to attack your area, you are allowed to attack that portal then. But if the portal has not been used to attack you, you are not allowed to attack it. So make sure that you are watching for portals. And if it's questionable whether or not an uh, uh, attack has come from that portal, do not attack it. We have people in our you know, kingdom that they go through and they whine and cry like little babies and everything. And they know who I'm talking about because they do it all the time. And so what they do is they basically will, like, they might attack from a portal that is in their clan area. And I've watched them attack through the portal that's in their clan area. And then they send their attack through it on up towards you. And what ends up happening is you go through and you attack back. But what happens is they go through and they say, we didn't attack through that portal or whatever. That That is an illegal hit or whatever. And then they end up suing you. They'll first go through and say, oh, you owe us, you know, this amount of, you know, gold or this amount of silver, blah, blah, blah. Or they'll have it to where they will go through and file a complaint against you and try and have you on outlaw status and have it to where basically they make your life on this game a living hell. So a lot of times if you are a bigger player and you are a target, they are going to try and milk you for every single dime that you have. So do not attack portals. It's usually a bad idea unless it's within three spaces of your clan area. If you attack, attack their city. Unless you prearrange it another way, uh, like prearrange your attacks. Like I had this one guy, he was really, really awesome. His name was Tracaris or whatever. Those of you that know Game of Thrones, you know what I'm referencing, Tracaris, you know, fire and, you know, whatever. So Dracarys and I, we would put our portals in the middle of nowhere. And then be, even though he had Ulrich and I had Ulrich, it would not take seven and a half minutes in order to get to each other. We would just line up our portals across from each other. He attacks, then I attack. He attacks, then I attack. You do it in a gentleman-like fashion. So that this way you can get your uh, conquest points up. So if you have anybody that you like from another enemy clan or whatever... Then I would go through and highly advise like going through and setting something up to where it's like, hey, we're about the exact same level as far as our might goes and our ability goes. Why don't we have it to where we just are peaceful? We attack each other in a civilized way. And then after that, wait a half an hour and bubble up the rest of the Clash of Thrones. You will still be able to get into the top 100 because it does um, uh, give an advantage for Clash of Thrones. You are going to go through and get a good bit of dragon coins out of it. You get some tar and all this other kind of stuff. So there is an advantage to doing Clash of Thrones. But you got to be smart about it. I don't know who the heck makes this game. I don't want to know their real life name or anything else like that. But I know just from me alone, they are rolling in the freaking money. Like, you know, I mean, I've spent a darn good bit. But I know players have spent a lot more. Like in the Beowulf Kingdom side, I know one guy has spent ten to fifteen thousand dollars. No lie. So you know that they're making bank off of this. Clash for Throne or Clash of Thrones is the biggest money maker that this game has because they know 
People have egos. They want to do the measuring contest, and they're trying to go through and attack the hell out of each other. And then that's when they go through and they buy these Merc packages that cost $250, and they might do the double up or the times two and get the $500 worth, and they get the extra stuff included and everything. So, yeah. If you're going to play Clash of Thrones, please play it smart. I hope that covers everything you guys would possibly have a question on for Clash of Thrones. At some point later on down the line, I will make sure that I do a video when I know the other clan is going to attack us and everything. Just so you can see exactly how I operate and how I do things or whatever. But just bear in mind, if you're going to do this, please play smart. Oh, speaking of which, we have an attack going against my buddy. I'm going to go through and add reinforcements. I already have a preset. Hit start march. I'm going to have to go through and speed this up. Okay, so you guys are going to have to wait. Let's see. Oh, they decided to be tricky. Not there, not there, not there. <laughs> oh, it's funny. I like this. Okay, so basically what ended up happening was TBC, their leader, SR, uh, 300 SRT and everything, decided to set up a portal in an area where he knew people would not look for it. All the way over here off to the side, nobody's going to look for it and everything. And so what he can do is he can send that attack, and it's going to be seven and a half minutes no matter what. But if you're not paying attention for the red lines and everything, or if the player is not really paying attention to the game then he's going to go through and get attacked and nobody's going to look for it. So, like, if I'm looking on the border, like, I know they know my habits because I talk to them and I don't care. It's the reason why I talk to them is so that I kind of give them fair warning. Like, hey, guys, if you want to go through and ride this uh, train, expect to get run the heck over. They know that I'm going to patrol the border. So if you have it to where the line is coming in from an area where you're not expecting, like I would expect 300 to come down uh, from the bottom right-hand corner, by coming through here, he might be able to sneak past my view if I have it to where like I'm only looking at my city area and I'm zoomed in. But because of the fact that I don't do that, he's going to strike up here. So granted, I don't expect you guys to sit around for five minutes and some odd seconds and everything or three minutes or whatever i don't know i can't read their crap but that is basically the way that you do this and this player is a whole heck of a lot better off because now so let's go into our clan chat right i wish i could type So I sent out a message basically like, assist this player, you know, right now. My clan's going to go through and scurry into activity. You can see this icon that means that there is an attack incoming. You can see that there's a portal right next to this guy's city because of the fact that he knows that people love to attack him. And we're going to go through and zoom on in a little bit. So let's zoom on in. Whenever you're in the world stage and everything, if you have decent enough vision, do not go through and have it to where you're zoomed in too much. So because of the fact that we saw this, now you have all the reinforcements going. Now, here's one other thing that I like to do that I don't know if other people like to do this, but it's a good idea. Trace back the red line always. And then look at the player that's incoming. Now, you can tell generally how strong a player is by the size of their dragon. So, now granted, my dragon is not out where I can easily see it and compare and contrast and everything else like that, like measurement contest. But looking at this dragon, this dragon is not that big. So, if I had to guess the level of it, like it's bigger than the smallest one. So, it's not like a level 30 dragon or level 50 dragon or whatever. This is probably somewhere in the like the 100 to 150 range or whatever, which means that this player is probably somewhere around the exact same for their hero. They're not the biggest, baddest player in the world. 
I mean, granted, it might be to where 300 SRT is basically, you know, like that might be him himself. But a lot of times what that clan leader does, and he's very, very smart in this regard, so I do appreciate it. He will go through and he will put up the portals for his clan. Now, what ends up happening is whether or not he puts them on the edge of our clan or he puts them someplace else, he will go through and he will have it to where he doesn't do the attacking himself. He will let his other clan members go through and do this. But then when you go through and you attack his portal, he is backed up by usually two or three other armies that are reinforcing his city so that this way you cannot defeat his army. If I went through and I attacked this uh, like portal right now, I would probably lose. Just because of the fact that I haven't done any merc packages, he might have done it. I might have it to where it's just me going through and attacking. He might have it to where he has like three, four, five, six, ten people that are reinforcing him. So therefore, it's basically like drawing me in just to go through and squash me like a bug. So for the time being, we basically we've reinforced uh, this guy's city, Milanus. We have it to where because they have a portal and I would never, ever, ever advise that you have portals out there in COT. If I have a portal out during COT and I'm hiding behind my bubble, they can still attack me. So if you are bubbling up, do not, do not, do not have any portals out and active. Automatically close them. All right, this guy is not as far away as I thought. So you guys get to see one minute and 15 seconds of the march towards this guy's death. Now, I know why it is that, you know, they're pissed off at Milanus and everything because he is, um, what's the best word for it? Spunky, I guess would be the best way to put it. He likes to attack and fight and he does have a problem with going through and, you know, doing it. Now, you can see up here on my screen or whatever, I'll zoom in a little bit for it or we'll move to the tripod. You can see an allied player is under attack. He went through and he hit the reinforcement part. So that this way he gets more people to go through and help him out. And we're just going to go through and angle this on up so you guys can see the attack incoming. And you can kind of get an idea for the strength of the other player when that happens. I wouldn't be surprised if during the middle of the night they uh, this clan goes through and sends like one person at a time trying to see when exactly... Like, nobody's paying attention or whatever. And then they'll send, like, ten people after this one city. Okay, they lost. Of course they lost because they had to face moi. Alright. So that gives you guys a good idea as far as what exactly, and that wasn't that big of an enemy because of the fact that I do not have that many uh, losses or whatever. I'll just go through and revive them. That was probably a scout army, like not the actual scout personnel themselves, but basically like somebody that is used as a test to see who's awake, who's not awake. And you just send them randomly or whatever to make, uh, to where like, you know, you see, Okay, how many people are reinforcing? Because one thing that they could do, and I don't know if you guys think this much in depth, let's say, for instance, that they decide to send that one army. If I were them, I'd be looking over how many people are coming through that portal in order to go through and reinforce. I'd be like, hey, guys, watch this. Let's see if this other clan is ready. So let's say, for instance, right, that they go through and they send a seven and a half minute march. They know that we're going to go through and reinforce. If we had it to where we had like 20 armies pouring out of this portal in order to go help out this one player, then what they could do is they could always go through and attack from another area and attack somebody that does not, like this person. Now, granted, they're not a part of my clan, but you get the idea. That does not have Ulrich. And then we would have to send our reinforcements back and then go through and send them on over to this other player and that would take too long, so they'd be able to go through and land a successful attack. Whenever your uh, ally is done being attacked, always go through and click on reinforcements. 
Look for where exactly your army is. And that, granted, on the phone, it's set up differently. So you will have to click a button in the top right that says reinforcements. Click on that, and then you will see your army. And then we're going to go through and do recall army. So I'm sending my army back towards me so that this way, if any other area gets attacked, I could go through and attack, uh, like defend and help them out at the exact same time. All right, guys, that is done and over with. I am not going to talk anymore. If you would like to go through and comment or subscribe or like or whatever, I greatly appreciate it and everything. I know that, like, you know, some people appreciate this stuff. Other people do not. I am definitely going to be going through and doing a playbook, not in, in like, you know, a 200-page playbook or anything else like that. I'm going to basically go through and do a how to be successful in this game step by step not like every single minute part but like most of them to where it sets you up for success it's probably going to be like a 10 page document in all honesty as far as how i would go through and basically like when i would join a clan when i would go through and do this research when i would do this research what captains to target initially what to do in the long run all this kind of stuff so I'm going to start going through and building it. And if you guys would like it, you know, if you would like a copy of it and everything, just reach on out to me um, sometime in about a week from now or a week from when this video is posted or whatever. I should be done with it by then. So that this way it helps more of you out because the very most important thing is let's help out our friends and our, you know, people that want to play this game because, if people stop playing this game, then you're going to be the only person on out here doing it, and it's going to be boring as heck. So I'd rather have more people enjoying the game. You guys have a good night. Talk to you later, and bye.